Uh, it's a privilege to catch up and have a cup of coffee with uh, Dr. Krishna Kumar. Uh, Dr. Krishna Kumar is the head of Shankanetralaya's elite school of optometry. Uh, KK, it's good to be here. Great. Um, KK, I, I think you know you have the rare privilege of having been a student here, somebody who then did your doctorate here, you taught here, and now you're you know heading the school. Um, my first, um, you know, question would be, um, what is it? Uh, I mean, how is it different being a student to to leading the same institution? Where there are certain things you picked up then as a student that you are able to to implement now. I think uh, I think very interesting question. No one has asked, uh, but I always thought about this uh, question: how I change or evolve with uh, time as a student and um, as an optometrist in the same institution, as a, a young uh, uh, teacher uh, dealing with young people. Uh, I think there is a very interesting uh, you know, transformation from a studentship to uh, becoming someone who is going to be responsible for the students. Uh, I think. So initial uh, um, aspect, as a student I could recollect uh, I am a very calm, quiet uh, individual among uh, strong, very vociferous uh, uh, young female around uh, me as my classmates and myself and I remember my uh, classmate, one only other male met and there is uh, Dr. Vidya Shankar who is the only one who uh, did optometry and ophthalmology is practicing in uh, and he is a very brilliant chap and I am an average, uh, I don't say below average, average to above average uh, and been molded by uh, brilliant people around me and great faculty at the time. So my studentship was more of um, um, learning and uh, and very hard working individual. That's something which I always felt which really helped me. The two things I learned as a student that I have to work hard if I want to be in um, or in par with my classmates. And the uh, second important thing is if I want to get into best institution, Netralia at that time I want to get into, um, they should respect me, then I should be here, not just join, but here for a longer time. So that is a mindset as a student I had, uh, though the learning naturally happens in this environment. So as a student I never put extra energy for my skill, but I put extra energy to gain the knowledge. But once I became um, an optometrist, um, I never, uh, I, I remember the yearly phase of my seeing patients is always with a lot of uh, uh, concern. Uh, one thing which I, um, uh, I was very good, if I could recollect at the time, was uh, taking history, history taking. During those times, we didn't have electronic medical records, so we do write. I still remember my uh, neuro ophthalmologist to always call me, uh, it's Dr. Navin J. Kumar say that KK you have taken a wonderful history which I need not to admit. I think these compliments from some, some of the ophthalmologists and uh, some of the senior optometrists at the time have really molded me um, and probably made me recognized uh, by the top management and a great uh, man, a visionary Dr. Badrinath. Uh, I, I never knew that he's watching um, me from far off. Um, interestingly, I never had an urge to uh, move out and never had an urge um, that success is, means uh, yearning more. Uh, probably it is the background from which I come. No one taught me that uh, yearning more money, uh, living a luxurious style of living is what is uh, success. But for me, people taught um, that uh, doing good and continue to do good if you want to do and only then you will be known to people. I think that is the slow transformation and I become slowly more uh, responsible. And I, I would like to recollect this incident. I think this young uh, people should realize okay, that was the time I'm reporting. I think there was not a concept called uh, HOD of optometry headed by optometry itself. Uh, it's uh, optometry, HOD of optometry is always an ophthalmologist. And I used to report to ophthalmologists being somehow senior uh, after three to four years of my joining. I've become a senior most when people were leaving. And uh, first time we had something called uh, meeting. We had a meeting with our uh, uh, HOD and I thought meeting means we have to be uh, sharing all the information. I was so open, sharing 
sometimes I think I sounded uh, uh, differently to the management and after the meeting um, the HOD and uh, if I remember Dr. Badrina told that thing, KK you are so you know, uh, sounding different not as a student, not as a young thing, but you're sounding as more as a rebel. It's not a good uh, thing. Then only realize probably uh, the learning here is uh, the points you can have a difference of opinion, but the way you have to put this should be very, very thing. This is a great learning, and that has transformed. And uh, coincidentally, or maybe after that, uh, because the institution wants me to learn and gain uh, to be a good leader. They made me a HOD of optometry. I don't see that as the consequence of it, or probably yes, or it is because they want me to learn how a leader should do. I think that's a great transformation for me, for a studentship, a sort of uh, yearly, uh, no, uncontrollable way of seeing things or talking, to a, a place where I become more responsible for and, and thirty yeah. odd uh, uh, people, and from there the traveling to as a lecturer here. I, I think I'm not a great uh, lecturer. I'm a more of a bookish lecturer, if I remember correctly, in the initial phase. And um, that's a great learning. Then they said, uh, KK, why not you continue to be the HOD there itself? <laughs> and probably with time, uh, the dealing with um, uh, students who are coming there for the internship and made me more and more, uh, you know, a great learner of handling people. And uh, there was a time people said, KK, you are a great uh, skills to manage children or manage people uh, around you. Uh, it's not only within my department, people around my department. And they were saying that you have a great school, you know, really appreciate. I think that is the second uh, learning for me, a transformation. Probably that's the right time when uh, uh, our, our management also felt, KK, it's a high time for you to uh, get into uh, more of um, uh, teaching and uh, managing the school of optometry which you've done, been, uh, which you've done very well uh, you know in, in, in terms of bringing it to where uh, you know it is but my my next um, you know uh, question or feedback i would like from you is i think this is a school that's stayed at the top of the game for a long time you know in, in terms of you know your standing uh, as as an optometry school in the whole region i would say now, what are things you consciously do to make sure you maintain that? Okay, the first thing I'm very, we are very conscious that we don't want to call ourselves as in the top. I think what, what we want to do, whatever we want to do as the best way. And uh, we always feel there is a scope for improvement. I think probably if, uh, if that is one reason why uh, we always feel uh, nice at the end of the day is because we always feel there is a scope for improvement. And that's what happened. Uh, probably I could uh, uh, see that um, this over the years, for how ESO always carry forward. Uh, when they first time, I remember Dr. Evangelingam, who is uh, no more, who was the second principal of this college. And uh, at that time between 91 to 2001 was a golden era. I remember what uh, what he did was he gave a lot of importance to research. At that time, people don't talk about research even in I care industry and here is a man in an optometry school, he said we should do a lot of research and research means it means that we are understanding uh, uh, patients and gaining new knowledge, new information is going to come, that is going to transform the clinical service which we are providing, understanding our own thing. And it also helps um, students to look things very systematically. If at all, I see the success um, uh, story of Elite School of Optometry because of this uh, you know, view uh, that um, we have to look things very systematically as help. And of course, uh, being with the best of tertiary eye care hospital, uh, uh, naturally made our student well trained, and it has helped us a lot more in the um, uh, in the in national as well as international arena. Uh, once again, I'm retreating. Our goal is not to climb that we are the uh, first or second. I don't believe in first and second issues. I believe in we have to retain whatever we are doing the best way and see the scope further how we have to improve. At this instant, uh, you have triggered me, so I, I want to tell you just uh, 
uh, a week back we have initiated this semester two interesting program and uh, which will be uh, very very useful for other schools of optometry in this country one this is the age where people try to have a difficulty handle not uh, information in the hand uh, the around that information the distraction if we want to be focused well, we have to learn the art of how to enhance our concentration. So we have initiated, uh, after interacting with our students, taking their confidence, first time to best of my knowledge in an optometric curriculum, enhancing concentration as a classroom session, which is happening from the semester, which is a structured program, the experts come, and we are also trying to do simultaneously the impact on it. The second interesting thing is we do teach communication during the first year. We always feel that communication uh, in the clinical setup is different from uh, what we teach us in each initial phase of optometry in the first year. Now we have introduced in this third year of the second semester before they get into the internship a, a nice curriculum called communication skills for clinics. This is something which uh, we are very proud and this is what we feel uh, make us always uh, you know, do you know, the best. If we claim that we are best, this is the reason why we claim that we always innovate, we want to give the best and we also understand the present uh, you know, uh, students and their needs and try to uh, see that at the end any institution, healthcare institution without social accountability yeah. is not going to carry, take it forward. I probably success story all these reasons around and still we feel there is a scope for improvement. That's great. And one last question KK, you already touched on this uh, before. Um, you had said that this institution made research a high priority. Now many other optometry schools in India would want to do exactly that. Uh, you know, why and how they do that if um, if you could probably you know provide some pointers, you know, that would be excellent. Okay, I, it, it's, I, I feel first of all, um, this is a very important question now. In the last two years I am travelling adequately throughout this country, uh, especially to various schools of optometry. And wherever I go, uh, my hard topic of late is why we need to do research. And um, because we are a born researcher, we need we are all thinking, all, I think all of us have to look back and see during your young days, um, even before school, you will be always very innovative, very creative, yeah. trying to look at probe and other things. Some of our schooling system has, um, uh, in the name, under the, you know, the context of taming us, um, made us not think uh, creatively. Maybe that's the fundamental reason. But I would like uh, now at this stage every school um, should uh, find out uh, why we need to do research on the context to two or three aspects which I thought I would like to highlight. The simple thing, now if you still climb in this country 42% of people can't access to spectacle, simple spectacle, don't you think if our core uh, role as an optometrist that we have to remove this refractory aspect from this uh, in this country, don't you think there should be a mechanism to do it? People have then are uh, working on different mechanism. Still, we claim that 42 percent of not, uh, you know, can't access to. That means there need to be a question rise, or it means there is a gap in the uh, literature, a gap in the procedure, wherein we need to fill. So research is nothing but trying to fill these type of gaps and finding out the solution for our own community need. So this so is a practical research, applied research is what, what you are saying. This is what I think in India requires more of applied research and I think it should be like a top down question. If we climb, if, if you see that research is uh, nothing but uh, finding out an answer to today's problem and then technology or any of the experimental work can be the bottom one, try to answer towards these topmost question. The question always, personally I feel, should come from the community, should come from the clinics. It should not come from books. It should not come from the article written by some Western ideas. Because most of us, I feel as a clinician, as a, in the school, as a faculty, when you teach, there, are, there might be two or three questions asked by the students. You, you go back and find out. I bet you 
after uh, three, after one or two years of teaching, you will you would have accumulated uh, 20 to 30 unanswered questions. If you take those questions, and if after all it came from your own students, and find out the answer, I think in a systematic way, I think this is where I feel we have to think. Identifying the perfect question from around you. I think most of the questions are in and around, flying around you. Only thing we are, miss, are missing out the questions. That's something which we are missing out. When your interaction, they might be getting one question. So try to follow that question, look at the literature, and see whether there is an answer. The answer probably not from your own community, it can be from other community. And see whether this can work in our community. And, and if it is not working, then find out what other ways and mode of it. So I think the systematic approach, if everyone does, um, we know that research methodology courses are there in most of the places. Uh, probably it should become more, you know, often we should revisit this research methodology program. If someone can teach how to write a protocol, how to go about doing the research, I feel every school, it should become a part and parcel of it. And at one small uh, suggestion which I would like to give to all the schools, don't collect the data, then ask the research question. A lot of time I see they will say they're collecting the data. Mm. Now what to do, sir, whether I can write this as a paper. As much as possible, avoid it. Because most of the time when you have data collected, the methodology will be at uh, real, uh, no, it will not be accurate. So always plan ahead what we want to do. Even if it's going to be a simple question. I feel there are simple questions I would like to tell. Uh, recently I was uh, now reading through Cogren literature on uh, aspects of we prescribe rampantly those uh, low vision devices for uh, children. I was looking for is there any evidence as to which are the low vision devices should be prescribed for pediatric children. Believe it, after going through thousands of literature, there is not even one strong evidence saying that which is the ideal low vision device for the pediatric thing. Mm. Now this is the gap. Mm. This is the gap. And 10% of our low vision population only are can access to low vision services itself. This is the gap. There are two ways of looking. One, service providing. Second question here is why we couldn't provide it? Where are those 90% of people? Where they are uh, you know, up, going? what they are doing in life, are we, can't we do some, bring in some change in the quality of life of those people as an optometrist. I feel these are all fundamental yeah. questions. I strongly feel schools of optometry should try to take up such questions and work forward. Once we establish the practice of this question, going into the fundamental uh, thing, because fundamental research required a lot of money. Now today getting those type of money is always a challenge. But if you do a lot of community-based research, clinical-based research, we are going to see the reap of the results immediately being applied into the clinical services. So probably in India, to starters, especially schools of optometry, can take up the simple questions. Um, thank you for... Uh, uh, I need to thank you for taking the time uh, and, and talking to us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bye -bye. sir. Thank you.